Hi, my name is Patrick Kuchio, the head of missions at Christ is the Answer Ministries based right here in Nairobi, Kenya. Now, when was the last time God interrupted your plans? When was the last time God interrupted your plans? You see, God from time to time interrupts our plans, whether grand or small, God from time to time does interrupt our plans. Stay tuned as we talk about this subject when God interrupts our plans. Now the Bible does record for us a vision that Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, his father was Berechiah, his grandfather was Edo. He saw several visions and he captured these visions in the book of Zechariah. Very fascinating book. In chapter 2, he sees a vision of a man with a measuring line. The Bible says, Then I looked up, and there before me was a man with a measuring line in his hand. I asked, where are you going? He answered me, to measure Jerusalem, to find out how wide and how long it is. While the angel who was speaking to me was leaving, another angel came to meet him and said to him, Run, tell that young man, Jerusalem will be a city without walls because of the great number of people and animals in it. And I myself will be a wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be its glory within. Very interesting episode of a young man who had a burden, of a young man who had a vision, of a young man who had a desire to actually get the dimensions of Jerusalem. It presupposes he had something up his sleeves. It can only point to a project of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. You see, by this time, the walls of Jerusalem lay in ruins. So it was okay for this young man to actually step up to the plate to do what needed to be done. He must have had a grand plan. And he went about it the right way. Get the measurements. Sounds like an architect. Sounds like an engineer. Get your dimensions right be before you continue with this project. But midstream, God interrupts his plans. God sends an angel to tell this young man, Hey, before you proceed, Jerusalem will be a city without walls because of the great number of people and animals in it. And I myself will be a wall of fire round and about Jerusalem and the glory within. In other words, God was telling this young man, I have come to interrupt your plan. I can only imagine what was going through this young man's mind because this was an angelic word. He had a noble dream, a noble desire, a noble plan, but God still interrupted his plan. It's interesting that every time God interrupts our plans, we should always bear this in mind. He has a better plan in store. When God interrupts your plans, he always has a better plan in store. Now, some of you are wondering, God interrupting my plans? I thought he's sovereign, so every plan that I have is from God. Well, don't be quick to say so. Now, remember that career you wanted to pursue, but God orchestrated events along the way, and you ended up pursuing another career. Guess what? God interrupted your plan. Think of that company that you wanted to join. And you were so sure, out of school, out of campus, this was your dream job. But God orchestrated events and you found yourself in another company. You know what? God interrupted that plan. Some of you were in relationships that probably were headed towards marriage. But events just seemed to scuttle your marriage plans and you, initially you are full of pain and wondering what is this could it be that it is god who orchestrated events by interrupting your plans how do i know this 
it's been said that hindsight is 2020. Hindsight is perfect vision. With the benefit of hindsight, some of you, when you look back, you can confidently say with a smile on your face, I am so glad God interrupted my plan. I am so glad God threw my plans into disarray because he showed you a better plan. Because every time God interrupts our plans, he has a better plan in store for us. So you and I don't need to be scared when God interrupts our plans because you know what? For interrupting, God will surely interrupt your plans. But you need to have the bigger picture in mind. So that when God interrupts your plans, rest cool and easy in his hands knowing that the sovereign God has the master plan in hand. You see, thinking of a master plan, my role as a church planter requires that I work hand in hand and very closely with uh, the project's office. Men and women who are gifted with designing master plans. Men and women who are gifted with de determining and deciding the best location for facilities on a piece of land. And because of my limitations, if I did not have the support of the great men and women in our project's office, I would have buildings all over the place. I would have the church facility here. I would have washrooms here. I would have parking somewhere here. But it requires an architectural mind to actually lay out a facility and particularly the buildings on a facility so that there is some nice order. Now, God is a master architect. Once in a while, he'll disorganize our lives because he's putting things in shape. So you and I don't need to be scared. You and I don't need to cry. You and I don't need to be depressed when God interrupts our plans because he always has a better plan in store. You see, God tells this young man who was going to measure Jerusalem with his measuring line that he had a better plan for Jerusalem. The Jerusalem that God had in mind was a city without walls. The Jerusalem that God had in mind where was, was God was its own wall of fire. Now, if you give me the option of having God as my wall or a concrete wall or a metallic barbed wire or, 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 or barbed wire uh, fence, I'd rather have God as my wall any day because God is the surest protection. I'd rather have God as my protection than some ugly bottles round and about some concrete wall or some razor wire round my wall. God says, I will be the wall round and about Jerusalem. You see, this young man who was running to measure Jerusalem, probably he had a limited vision. You see, when God says, do not measure Jerusalem because of the inhabitants in the city and the animals, this young man must have been wondering, but I think I know the population of Jerusalem. I know the number of people in Jerusalem. But God had you and I, who are non-Jews, in mind when he says, I, want, I do not want you to measure Jerusalem. I don't be limited to the walls of Jerusalem. Don't be limited to the dimensions of Jerusalem. I have a better plan. This plan incorporates people that are not on the ground. This plan incorporates people that are far away from Israel. You and I, who are not Jews, God had us in mind when he tells this young man, hey, I have a better plan plan for Jerusalem. The Jerusalem that I have in mind is bigger than can, cannot be contained by any human walls. The number of people, the animals cannot be contained in that particular wall. He, this is a message. When God interrupts your plans, remember he has a bigger and a better plan. But when God interrupts your plan, be quick to find out what is his plan. It's important for you to align yourself with God's plan. Because if you do not al align yourself with God's plan, you will be frustrated, 
you will be discouraged, you'll be depressed. This young man had to go through a realignment to realize that the Jerusalem that God had in mind was a different one that he had in mind. And guess what? God's plans are better than our plans. God's ideas are better than our ideas. God's projects are better than our projects. So next time God interrupts your plans, remember, he has a better plan in store. And number two, remember that it is important for you and I to align ourselves with his new plan. Now, you ask me for an example. I think of the Virgin Mary. She was this teenage girl who had been betrothed to Joseph. Her plan was to get married to Joseph. She must have loved, she must have loved Joseph. She probably must have introduced Joseph to her friends. If she was a typical Jewish girl, she was looking forward to this time when um, she would be married to Joseph. But God interrupts her plan. And she is with child without having known Joseph intimately. And I can imagine the challenges that she has to face with. That began with angelic uh, word from Gabriel that you shall be with child even without being intimate with Joseph. That must have thrown a spin into her understanding of biology. That must have thrown a spin into her social orientation. What will it be said of me? I am pregnant and I have not been with any man. This is going to be scandalous. But guess what? God had a better plan than she could ever have imagined. Because she aligned herself with God's plan when she declared to the angel, be it unto me according to your word. He was a virgin girl who took some time to ask the question, how will it be seeing that I'm only about a virgin? And the angel explained. And I am persuaded that there was a message that got home to Mary that no one else could understand. That discussion between her and the angel made so much sense because she finally says, be it unto me according to your word. Mary was aligning herself with God's better plan. And guess what? She's gone down history as the only lady who actually gave birth to the Messiah. That was a better plan than anyone could ever have schemed, whether the family or herself or her friends. God from time to time will interrupt your plan. God from time to time will interrupt my plan. It is important that you and I allow God to interrupt our plans because he always has a better plan in store for us. At the end of the day, when this young man in Zechariah chapter 2, with the benefit of hindsight, when he sees the gathering, when he sees the many um, non-Jews who have come into God's city, into the Jerusalem of God, he must be saying, oh my, my vision was so limited. My vision was so myopic, but I allowed God into the situation. I allowed God to interrupt my plans and look what has become of this Jerusalem. You can hardly count the number of people. God's word came to pass. God did say to this young man, Jerusalem will be a city without walls because of the great number of people and animals in it. There are countless, countless people who have come to faith in Jesus Christ and have been numbered in this city of Jerusalem. Why? Because God interrupted someone's plans. He is God. You and I have to allow him to interrupt our plans. So as we close, are there plans that have been interrupted? Are there plans that seem to have been thrown into disarray and you're wondering? I thought I had planned very carefully, very meticulously to roll off this project, to begin this investment, to start a family, to start this job, to start my next degree, but your plans were thrown into disarray. Align yourself with God's new plan because God has a better plan for you.
My name is Patrick Kucho. I would like to know some more about you and uh, um, how you're relating with this message on when God interrupts our plans. We would like to hear from you. Please keep engaged on social media platforms as we continue this conversation on when God interrupts our plans. The Lord bless you richly.